Okay, g'day everyone. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that a few weeks ago, maybe a month now actually, I got a Schmidt Cassegrain. So this is a Celestron C9 and a quarter. Um, I'd been basically having my eye on a scope that I could use for galaxies and possibly planets for a while. And I'd always wanted a C9 and a quarter. I'd basically heard they're a real sweet spot. Like a, I think they refer to them as a Goldilocks sort of um, size, this nine and a quarter scope. Um, I think it's sort of partially to do with the fact that the primary mirror at the back of here runs at something like f2.3, which I hear is very, uh, it's a bit advantageous in terms of focusing and whatnot. So anyway, uh, long story short, I pulled the trigger because I found a really good deal on a C9 and a quarter that I actually got from Perth in Western Australia, or sorry, close to, somewhat, somewhere close to Perth in Western Australia. And um, I pulled the trigger on it and I've been using it now for about four weeks. So I haven't got a lot in terms of images on this scope yet. There's one here on my screen, which I'll show you a bit later. Um, but so far I've been really pleased with what I've found out of this scope. Um, there were a few things that I was obviously a bit scared of with a scope like this. Um, I didn't know, because I've never really done much imaging with a Schmidt Cassegrain, I didn't know what it was going to be like in terms of holding collimation. And the first thing I noticed is when I was focusing, or rather when I was trying to focus initially and I had my defocus star, I noticed that the, the donut that you can use to sort of see if your secondary mirror, mirror is collimated correctly, that was really nice and an equal round circle. So I was really pleased with that. I was, especially since it had traveled here from Perth, so I didn't even have to collimate this um, out of the box. I may have to do that in the future, but so far I haven't. Um, so that was really good. Um, I mean, for what it's worth, I can just show you here the primary mirror. You can see this thing's pretty, it's pretty darn big. Um, it does weigh in a very similar to my Esprit 120 in terms of weight. So I think it's getting around that nine kilo mark, something like that. And of course, by the time you've added all your extra bars and accessories on it and camera and whatnot, it's gonna be sort of a similar weight again to my Esprit 120, which is, yeah, it's about that 13 sort of kilo mark. So it's also um, obviously fast start compatible if I ever wanna convert it in the future to Hyperstar, um, but I don't really have any plans for that at the moment because really what I'm after with this is going after things that require that long focal length. Um, let me try and just turn this around a little bit so I can give you guys a bit of a summary of at least what I've changed on this since I bought it. Like I said, I've only had it a month, but there was a few things straight out of the box I wanted to do. Uh, all right guys, so I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of what came with this scope and what I've done to it. Um, it's, I've not done anything major, but just things that I knew were gonna make it simple, simpler because obviously I've been doing astrophotography now for a while and I knew that there were gonna be things that were gonna be sticking points. So obvious things straight away is to get a second bar for the top here. One of the main reasons is I got this Farpoint Astro handle. Because this is a big scope and um, pretty heavy and because also I've got the the um, peer extender um, on my um, EQ6 mount, it's lifting it up quite high. So this really helps keeping it steady. You can get one hand here, one hand under here. It makes it much easier to lift it up. And I highly recommend these things. Um, sort of seems basic, but it's one of the best purchases that I've made. Um, so this is basically just on a little clamp like that. And you can just take it off your Losmandy bar and put it back on like that. Um, similar here, I got myself a little little Losmandy D plate here, and it just means that I can attach things to it. So in this case, I haven't actually been using my ASI Air with it yet, but it just gives me options to attach things. Um, I'm thinking with this rig, I might even try the ASI Air since I might just be doing things like galaxies and see how that goes. So looking at the back of the scope here, what I've got here is I've got the Celestron 0.63 um, field flattener. So this is just the bog standard field flattener 
I think it's around $200 in Australia. I got this second hand quite a while ago. Um, and I must say I'm reasonably impressed with it. I kind of expected it to be, I don't know why, but I just kind of expected it not to be particularly good at all, given its price point um, and given the age of it. But it's not bad, it's not bad at all actually. And the first few images that I've taken, I've been reasonably impressed um, with, the, um, with the performance. I guess one thing to note is I am generally using the 533 camera, which is a small square sensor, so that's going to be helping me out a bit because I'm not really getting such a wide frame that I'm probably cropping off quite of those stars to the edge of the frame. But that's really the configuration that I'm after anyway, since it's really galaxies and um, planets that I'm interested in with this scope. So this, this configuration has just been changed. Basically, what I've got here is I've got the field flattener on it here. I've got the Celestron OAG, the off-axis guider, and I've got the ZWO filter drawer, and I've got the 533 camera here. So you need about, it's somewhere in the region of 105 to 110 um, millimeters backspacing to your camera sensor. Now, this being a very old field flattener, I think from what, I've, from what I've read and from what I've researched, that can vary a bit. So at the moment I've got it at 105 and that seems to be working pretty well. So I'm kind of happy with it, but I might experiment with that in the future. Um, yeah, I've got my filter drawer in here, my one shot color camera, and then my off axis guider here, which I've not tested yet. I only got this yesterday, so I've only just fitted this. Um, I did originally have my 60 millimeter guide scope on the top of here which was just a stop gap and I did find going sort of once I started to get into sort of over five or six minutes um, my stars were suffering and guiding was not really um, sufficient probably for the focal length of this scope so I've gone with the Celestron off-axis guider which has got really good reviews it's super solid super well made I decided to go with this rather than the ZWO one it's because it's got a particularly big mirror and prism on it. Um, so I'm really hoping this is gonna work well. And at least currently I've got the ASI 482 on here, which I haven't tested yet. And I, again, I got this second hand as well. So I'm hoping that might perform well as a little guide camera for this setup, but we'll see how that goes. So yeah. Historically, I've had the guide scope on here and all the images that I've taken so far, I've just been using a little 60 millimeter guide scope. But now we've got the off-axis guider. Hopefully this is gonna work better, especially for those longer exposures. So before I had this, all I would have was the field flattener and then I would have the Celestron T adapter and I had about, uh, what do we have? 15 millimeters of extensions, spacers, and then the same setup here with the filter drawer and the, the camera on. So that's another option which worked really well as well. But for now, I'm looking forward to seeing how this new configuration goes. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much the unit as it stands so far. I have also attached a ZWO EAF on this, um, which seemed to go really well. I looked at Astro Blender's instructions on how to fit this and that was a really great video. I've not had any issues with it um, and that worked perfectly fine. Just had to get the um, schmidt cassegrain bracket for the ZWO EAF because the standard bracket you get with it doesn't, doesn't fit. Um, but apart from that, that's all good. I've left the little guide scope um, on here. Um, who knows maybe i'll use it for visual one day i actually wouldn't mind a go just using this for visual every now and again but we'll see how we go with that um so that's pretty much my setup guys um i've used it a little bit i've taken it out now about four or five times the image that i've got on the screen i think is ngc 6744 pretty faint galaxy um, i'll show you some images of that at the end of the video just so you can um, have a look at that. I'm currently working on a couple of galaxies, Centaurus A and um, the Southern Pinwheel, which should be a lot easier actually than this particular galaxy. So I will have some images coming up to show a bit more of its performance. But I have to say so far, you know, 
I've been pretty impressed by this thing. I've been pretty impressed by the fact that the um, the focuser went on easily. I didn't need to bother collimating it. Um, it seems to hold focus pretty well. I just haven't had, I guess one of the gauges when you've been doing this hobby for so long is how many issues did you have when you started using it? Like, because we're often used to problems, you know, in this hobby. Um, and I must say, I've been pretty, pretty pleased with this. Obviously, it's not the edge version, which the edge version would be better, especially if you're really going for deep sky, um, nebula and those type of things, wider field. But for me, I'm quite happy with this version since I really do want to focus more on galaxies. And I've, I've got my refractors that I tend to, you know, be happier for my, um, for my nebula, my deep sky work. So I'm looking forward to getting some use out of this guy. My only issue now is that I only have one mount, my AZ EQ6 that can carry this or my Esprit. <laughs> so on those nights when I um, you know, get those clear skies, I've got to make a judgment call. Am I going for the galaxy tonight or am I going for the... Look, I think I can live with that for now. Um, but who knows, maybe one day I'll have to get a second big amount. Um, but yeah, that's the setup, everyone. And I am pretty, pretty happy with the way it's looking so far. All right, guys, the one... The one last thing I wanted to show that I did get is I got one of these W and W um, heated um, dew shields. So basically it's got a little heated element that runs around the front here. And all I had to do is basically just cut out a section here for it to go around these um, the little um, Losmandy bars on the, on the scope. And all I did is I used just some tin snips and just cut out this section here just stopping obviously before the heated element and that actually worked quite well so that fits on now nice and snug. I did end up having to get the um, 10 inch version because all the nine and a quarter ones were sold out so I did actually end up having to shorten this slightly as well because it was a bit too big but that fits really really nice and snugly now around the scope and providing I have it on about on cold nights I need to have this on about three quarter power but that seems to keep all the dew off the system, which is good. So that's working really nice. All right, guys, so that's about all we've got on the C925 for now. Um, like I said, I've used it now for about four sessions, only with the guys scope, um, and I've mainly been taking three minute exposures. Um, I did get about eight hours worth of data on NGC 6744, which is the galaxy that's on my screen at the moment. So I will um, finish off by showing you the image I managed to get out of that. Probably wasn't the best galaxy for me to start with as it is pretty faint, but um, I am gonna be going for Centaurus A and probably the Southern Pinwheel as well soon. So hopefully I will have some more, um, some more images soon. So thanks very much for watching. And if you've got any questions or comments, um, leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this content, please do um, like and subscribe because that always helps the channel a little bit. So I'll catch you next time, guys.